Hi, Simon here with a new video, this time about Spring Boot and test containers. Before we start with using test containers with Spring Boot, let's have a look at what test containers is. On testcontainers.com you will find all the information and documentation about test containers. And here you can see that they say test containers is unit tests with real dependencies. So before test containers, we often used, for example, H2 as a database, but uh, this has a problem because H2 is probably not the database that we are going to use in production. So with test containers, you can run any container during tests with the real database or messaging system or any other service that can be run inside a Docker container. To use test containers, you have to install either Docker on your computer or you can use uh, Test Containers Cloud with a client that will then run the test containers in the cloud. With Spring Boot 3.1, the test container support was extended you now can also use test containers not only to run during your tests, but also while developing the application. But how does this work? So let's start with a new project in IntelliJ. Um, I use the Spring Initializer from here. You can also go to, um, for example, start.spring.io and uh, create your project there. Uh, I do it right here. So for example, let's create a project called test containers. Um, move it to the demo folder here. I prefer to use Maven, but this also works with Gradle. Doesn't really matter. We use uh, for sure Java 21 to be on the latest. And then we hit next. And here, for example, I could add uh, web that we will have like a REST API or something that runs. And then I want to use uh, JDBC. And now finally, I want to use a database. As I said, uh, in earlier days, we were using H2 as an embedded database, but we want to use the real database. So we use Postgres, and then we add uh, the test container support. That's it. Um, Let's go further and create the project. Here we have the project. So first let's check out uh, the POM file to see what uh, the Spring Initializer added to our uh, project configuration. Here we see that we have JDBC and web, that's uh, the regular um, dependencies. And then we have Postgres as a database and some test dependencies. So we have Spring Boot start test, obviously, but we also have Spring Boot test containers integration. And finally, the test containers for Postgres. And uh, that's how it already has been before. But now let's have a look at uh, the test directory because there we have something new. And the new thing is the test test containers application. This class here is annotated with test configuration. That means that's a configuration class. And it has a bean factory method, Postgres container. And here inside this method, a new Postgres SQL container is created with uh, the Postgres latest image. And now we see a new annotation that was added in Spring Boot 3.1. It's called service connection. What is a service connection? A service connection means that the thing that is returned by this method uh, can be used to access a service. And the service could be like here, a Postgres database or any other database or a messaging system. So this will configure the configuration to access this service out of the box. So that means in that case, uh, the URL, the username, the password of the Postgres SQL container will be auto configured for you. Now, if you look at uh, line 19, we also see that there is a main method. So now we see that there is a 
call to Spring application from with this test containers application. So the test containers application is the real application here that is annotated with Spring Boot application. So this is the one that usually runs. But during development, we could now also use the test test containers application. And this is enhanced with the test containers application configuration from here. And then this is run. So that means if I start this uh, application here, the test application, this will also start test containers. So we can use the same mechanism as we use during testing also while developing our application. Now we can see that uh, here we see that test container is now starting in our application and this has a JDBC URL generated and this one is now auto configured for our application. Now let's add some functionality to the application. First I create a database table like schema SQL is the file name. This is a default file by Spring Boot that will be executed when uh, we start then our application. And here we can uh, add a table person and we say it has an ID, it's of type serial. This will be auto-generated. That's the primary key and we have a name that's a var car and this one is not null. That's it. Now that this runs, we have to edit also the application property file because this functionality with the schema SQL is only uh, running when we have uh, an embedded database. So we have to set the Spring SQL init mode to always that this works. Now let's uh, hit, but nothing uh, was reloaded. And uh, this leads me to the POM XML because I think we forget to add the dev tools, right? because we want to have reload of the application context if we change uh, our code. So let's have DevTools. And this was added here at the bottom. Great. So let's go ahead and uh, restart the application that the DevTools will run. And now we want to add uh, some Java code. So let's start with the person. Uh, we just use a record because this is immutable in our case with the ID and the name. And then we add a REST controller class called person controller. This one is a REST controller. And now the question is how we access the database. In Spring 6, a new a uh, client was added called JDBC client and we can use that one to um, insert and select the data. So let's get ahead and add post mapping. And this one will get uh, the person as a request body. And now we use this JDBC client. We can create the SQL statement, insert in two for example. Um, person, then we want to uh, add the name. As a value, we have prepared statement, so we use a parameter that we will not get any SQL injection in our application. And now we just use the name attribute of the person, and finally we call update. This will insert or execute the insert statement. Fine. Now, how do we test that? Um, first of all, we um, let uh, restart um, Spring Boot DevTools the application. And then finally, we add a HTTP file. So let's go ahead and call it person. Now, uh, the HTTP file is a functionality of IntelliJ, like maybe you know Postman, and you can here add requests. Let's say we have the post to the port 8080, we use application JSON, and we add some data. In that case, just a simple JSON 
submit a name. Let's take my name, Simon. So now let's start it. It runs, so it returned with 200. Um, and, uh, and now, um, how do we access the data? How we can check if there is some data in the database? Let's call a create a get mapping. So we add a get mapping here that returns a list of person, um, like so. Let's import the list. And then we also use the JDBC client, create the select statement. Uh, by the way, don't do that in production because this will return all persons and maybe we have a few thousands and this will be way too much. So please add paging here, uh, but for the demo purpose, that's good enough. And now we use a query and here we can pass the type that we want to return. So let's say this is class and finally call list. And then we have to, uh, sorry, return that like so. Now uh, it builds and now I have to restart the debug session. That's a bit uh, annoying because now uh, I will not get any data. So if we uh, create the get request here, we will get an empty result, right? But now we can use post and uh, this will create data and then we can use get and this will work. Now maybe we want to uh, return a different uh, result code because post now returns just 200. But we want to not return OK, we want to return created, for example. So we can go ahead here in the REST controller and say um, response status is created, like so. Now let's rerun that. It obviously restarted and now we have created. So let's check our data first. Let's go to the HTTP file and call get. Oh, we lost some data. Now before this was clear because the whole application has to be restarted, but now it just restarted the application context because I changed uh, the HTTP status on the person controller post method. And uh, if you look at the log files, we see that it restarts the application context and then it also restarts a new Postgres database. So we will lose the data during development. And we don't want to have that. And for that purpose, we can go to the bean and we can change the scope. There is a restart scope. And if we add that, now I have to restart uh, the application. And then we can uh, do the same again. So for example, we go here, say post Simon, then get Simon. Now Simon is here. And if I go to the uh, person controller and remove that because I said, oh no, created is not good. I want to return OK as it was before. I just removed that. And now if the application context reloads, the database connection or the database container will stay. So if I call get again, I still have Simon. So let's recap what we did. I created a schema file and then I created a person representing um, this database table and the person controller using that. Then we had the issue that when changing something in the controller, for example, and the application context during development is reloaded by the dev tools, we create also a new test container. And for this purpose, we have to add the restart scope here on the bean factory method. So this test container will stay. That means the bean created there will not be um, reloaded on restart. And finally, that's what we want to do. This is a short introduction to test container support in Spring Boot. Especially the new features like the service connection and the possibility to use test containers during development makes it even better. But don't forget to add the restart scope 
otherwise the test container will be restarted. I hope you enjoyed the video, so please like the video and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you.